In this lesson, we will see that nonmetals can share electrons to form molecules. We'll also see that seven elements naturally exist as molecules. Covalent compounds will be covered in much more depth in later chapters, specifically chapters eight and nine. Recall from previous lessons that all the elements on the table want a noble number of electrons. There are two ways for elements to get a noble number of electrons, stealing and sharing. Section 2.7 covered how ionic compounds are formed when nonmetal atoms steal electrons from metal atoms. This section will introduce a different kind of compound. Covalent compounds are formed when nonmetal atoms share electrons with other nonmetal atoms. The compounds formed are called molecules. A covalent bond contains a mix of attractive and repulsive forces that hold the atoms at a set distance from each other. They are much more complex than ionic bonds, but for this lesson, you only need to know that they exist. Ten elements occur naturally as molecules, and seven elements always occur as molecules. These are some of the most common elements on Earth, and you will need to write them correctly on upcoming exams. In other words, you have to memorize the seven diatomic elements here in green. I have two strategies for you. One is to recognize that they make the shape of a hockey stick on the periodic table with the hydrogen flying away into the opposing team's net. The other strategy is to say, Brinkelhoff. Brinkelhoff. Who could be this mysterious Brinkelhoff? Here is an artist's rendition of the terrifying Brinkelhoff. Anyway, since covalent compounds form discrete entities called molecules, we write the number of each atom in something called the molecular formula. One molecule of the flammable gas ethane has two carbons and six hydrogens. So we write its molecular formula as C2H6. Along with the molecular formula, we can also write something called the empirical formula. The empirical formula was invented before we knew about molecules, so it just gives the simplest ratio between the elements in the compound. For ethane, there is one carbon atom for every three hydrogen atoms, so the empirical formula is CH3. After humans discovered molecules in the 1800s, the molecular formula became by far the most popular way to represent molecules. It contains far more information than the empirical formula. For example, each of the following compounds shown has a different molecular formula, but the same empirical formula, CH2O. And trust me, you don't want to season your food with formaldehyde when you're expecting glucose. There are five common ways to represent molecules. We've already discussed molecular formulas, which give the number and type of each atom. The other four ways to represent molecules gives information on their structure, which will be vitally important in chapter eight. Brinkelhoff. <laughs>